Okay, so we're working on the vectors topic. This is example eight. We're moving on to the idea of uh, defining the equation of a straight line in three dimensions uh, using vector geometry. So you probably know that in two dimensions, uh, we've got the equation of a straight line, which might look something like y equals mx plus c, or in a different form. The idea being that we have a way of expressing the relationship between a pair of uh, numbers, x and y, coordinate points or ordered pairs. And the, the, the rule is that uh, the y coordinate or the y value is always expressed by uh, some value mx plus c. We can de de determine that the m is effectively the gradient of our line on a graph that sees the y intercept. So we'll get information about a point uh, on the line and also about the direction that the line is in. Okay, But crucially, uh, the equation uh, allows to define points that lie on the line or points that lie that don't lie on the line by determining if the given x and y values make the equation true or false. So we're looking for uh, effectively an equation that we can use to determine whether points lie on a line or don't lie on a given line in three dimensions. I've got a couple of pictures here on the screen really just a representation of a, of a book. So we, we've mentioned uh, before about the idea of using vector geometry in uh, graphic design and in computer games and animation. Uh, the idea that uh, this might be a little animated book. So effectively what we'd be looking for is uh, each of the edges of the book would be the equation of a line in three dimensions. The, the surface of the book would be planes. So we want to be able to, to look at the mathematical representation of those lines and planes. So there's three ways in which we can actually express the equation of a line. Uh, and these are the ones written down here. We've got vector form, which is the kind of starting point for the other two forms. Vector form is the, the theory uh, which underpins these equations. However, the normal ways of expressing it are to go on to what we call parametric form and symmetric or Cartesian form. These are the two ways in which you will normally work with the equation of a line. Vector form is the kind of mothership uh, idea where it all comes from. So uh, very similar to the idea of two-dimensional uh, linear uh, e equations, we can either specify a line as being through a point in a given direction. In other words, with a gradient um, and uh, a point, or we might be given two points in which we can actually work out. So it's a bit like the information that we might be given with an equation of a line in two dimensions. So let's go on and see what the equation might look like. So vector form is the basis of our theory here. So what we're going to think about is a line L, that's this purple line here, uh, that we we don't know much about. We know point A lies on the line. So that's a fixed point. We must be given some information about a point that lies on the line. Uh, what we know is that the line goes in a certain direction. Um, we don't maybe know the actual uh, information about the line itself, but we do know something about some vector or direction D. Okay, So we might be told that the line L is parallel to this vector here. So effectively, what it means is that we are wanting to create a line L that's parallel to some given uh, vector D. So if I were to move that here, the key thing is that we've got this other point R, which only comes into play when we're parallel to vector D. In other words, R is effectively some uh, point x, y, z, and that's where the, the actual variables stay. There's some point r which makes the line through a parallel to d. Okay, that makes sense. So r is a movable point uh, or some variable point that allows l to suddenly be parallel to d. Okay, so it's all very theoretical at the moment. We've got no values to go on. d is called the direction vector of line l, and if you think about it, direction vector, which might be expressed as, say, 2, 3, 1, is effectively the gradient of the line. So 2, 3, 1 is simply an instruction to go from some point 
uh, two units along, three units back, and one unit up. In other words, it tells the instructions of how to get from one point to another, and the slope that it generates. Well, effectively, that's all a gradient does in two dimensions. It's up over along. It's the it's the if you count boxes or it's y two, mind you, it's the difference between the x and y coordinates. It's the change in x and y coordinates. So this vector here, the direction vector, is simply the change in x, y, and z coordinates. So we're not going to talk about gradient anymore. Uh, we're going to talk about the direction vector, but you have to understand that they basically do the same. Uh, they have the same purpose. Okay. So what can we say here? Uh, what we can say here um, is that we've got point A and R. So the vector A R A to R is parallel to some direction vector d, which means that ar must be a multiple of direction vector d. We call that a parameter. Okay. In other words, we know that vectors that are parallel are multiples of each other. So all we can say here is that uh, if you multiply vector d by some parameter or some constant value, it's going to give us vector ar. We can use the position vectors a and r to change the vector ar into position vector r minus position vector a, hopefully that makes sense, equals t times vector d. And we're actually rearranging because r, remember, is the x, y, z part. So we're saying the unknown variables x, y, z is equal to a plus some value t multiplied by d. That is the vector equation of a straight line. r equals a plus td is the vector equation of a straight line in three dimensions. So what does that tell us? R is the vector that contains the the the, the x, y, z part of some point on the line. So R represents there exists a point such that it is vector A, which is a given point on the line, multiplied by some parameter times this direction or gradient vector, which we might know, we might have to work out. Okay, that's the form that we give it in. Let's try a wee example here. Find the vector the equation of the straight line through the point 2, negative 1, 6, parallel to the vector i plus 2j minus 8k. So we've got some, just to kind of try and, and uh, match that diagram that we had on the previous screen. We've got some vector, some vector d, which happens in this case to be 1, 2, negative 8. So that's effectively, we're told, the gradient of the line is 1, 2, negative 8, the direction vector. And our line that we're talking about here uh, has a point on it, which is 2, negative 1, 6. And that would be our point A. And there is some point R, which also lies on the line. So we don't need to go through the, all the theory from the start. We can say that the effect of the vector equation of the line will look like this. R Vector r equals a plus t d. T is a is one parameter that gets used. Sometimes you see lambda getting used. You can use u. You can use a, a variety of symbols to represent this parameter. I'm going to use t uh, for just now. So r equals a plus t d is the equation of our line. What do we know? Uh, we, obviously, we don't know r. Uh, we know that a is the position vector a. Is going to be the column matrix 2, negative 1, 6. So 2, negative 1, 6 plus t times uh, 1, 2, negative 8. That's basically it. That's as far as we can go with the equation of the line. We could express it in like a horizontal form or unit vector form 2i minus j plus 6k plus t lots of 
i plus 2j minus 8k, which is a slightly long-winded uh, and less helpful way to write it, but it's another way of writing it. But this effectively is the vector equation of a straight line. It's not particularly useful in this uh, state, and we're going to be going on to look at why we use the other two forms, the para parametric and uh, the symmetric forms. But hope that's the beginning of the theory. Check in examples uh, 9 and 10 to take it a wee bit further.